This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Coming up on July 20th from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, in a bout that will be broadcast on the streaming app service known as Netflix, YouTuber turned boxer Jake Paul will apparently be fighting the former undisputed world heavyweight champion, the former baddest man on the planet, the one and only Iron Mike Tyson. Oof, maron. Now, I know a lot of diehard boxing fans are probably wondering why am I even giving this so-called circus sideshow attraction any attention at all? And well, the reason is because it's Iron Mike. And he was the biggest boxing superstar during my formative years, when I was early on in my journey of becoming a boxing fan. For those old enough to remember the rise of Iron Mike, it was incredible stuff. With the ferocious combinations, the insane quickness, speed, and athleticism, the concussive two-handed power, and all the highlight reel knockouts that came with the territory. Mike was special. Mike was unique. And Iron Mike was a powerhouse force to be reckoned with. Iron Mike had an enormous impact on heavyweight boxing, and he had an impact on me as a new, younger boxing fan. To better illustrate the type of excitement Tyson generated, these were the words of the late great Hall of Fame trainer Emmanuel Stewart from when I had the opportunity and privilege to interview him about heavyweight boxing history. Myself. I was out one time on a Friday night having a good time, and I said, well, I got to leave and go home and watch Mike Tyson on HBO, because it must have been around about 88 or 9. And I know the HBO fights was on Friday nights, and the guy asked me, he said, well, who's Mike Tyson fighting? I said, I don't know. I don't even care. Well, that's how excited, you know, you got to be about Mike. He was going to knock out somebody with their head snapping up and uh, some cruel manner, but he brought that intensity and animal instincts out that, I don't think I've saw any fighter in my lifetime still be able to do. And uh, just was just exciting to watch and totally transform the image of boxing as far as I'm concerned in the heavyweight division to the degree that no one still after him is still captivated and had the impact on the audience the way that, and, and other fans the way that Mike Tyson had. In November 1986, Tyson became the youngest heavyweight boxer in history to capture a major world title when he knocked out Trevor Burbick to win the WBC belt. And from there, one by one, Iron Mike collected all three major belts of his day, which in addition to the WBC also included the WBA and IBF. And eventually, in June 88, Tyson knocked out Michael Spinks in the opening round, which earned Mike a rightful claim as the lineal world heavyweight champion. By that point, Mike's status as being truly undisputed was beyond reproach, and he was indeed the baddest man on the planet. And during his reign, he had this incredible aura of invincibility. That was a very long time ago, however. After Tyson lost his first professional bout at the hands of Tokyo Douglas, which was the biggest upset in boxing history, that aura of invincibility still persisted. Tyson did get a nice little winning streak going, which included back-to-back -back victories against Razor Ruddick. And during those fights, Tyson was the universally ranked number one contender, and Ruddick was the universally ranked number two contender. But after winning both fights against Ruddick, the big-time showdown between Tyson and heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield never came together because Tyson was sent to prison. Even during his time away, the aura of invincibility lived on, where many viewed the loss to Douglas as a fluke, and despite having top guys like Holyfield and Riddick Bowe ruling the landscape, a lot of people still believe Tyson was the baddest man on the planet. When Tyson came back from prison, despite winning the WBC and WBA belts, he was never the same boxer. Tyson still carried that ferocious power, and his reputation remained menacing, but he was far removed from being the highly skilled, well-oiled machine that he was under the guidance of Kevin Rooney during his peak form stretch. 
Tyson would, of course, lose a pair of bouts against Holyfield. He lost his big-time showdown against Lennox Lewis. And near the end, he lost a couple of more fights against Danny Williams and Kevin McBride. And by then, it was clear that Tyson's heart was no longer in it, and he was finished. His last professional bout was the loss against McBride back in 2005, nearly 19 years ago. By the time this fight takes place, assuming it does, Tyson will be 58 years old, and Jake Paul just turned 27. To put things in perspective here, Tyson won his first major world championship in November 1986, and Paul wasn't even born until January 1997. It's insane. Paul was born in between Tyson's first loss against Holyfield and the infamous bite fight that took place when Paul was just five months old. Yet here we are, 2024, and like a phoenix rising from the ashes, on some level Tyson's aura of invincibility is back in style again. I've had friends who were once casual fans, some of them who have not watched a boxing match in more than 20 years, who were excited to see Mike Tyson knock this YouTuber out. You would think Paul should be fighting someone like me. Not me exactly, but if I was 50 years younger, well, if I was 50 years younger, I still wouldn't have been born yet. But if I was 20 years younger, yeah, Jake Paul would still kick my ass. I ain't exactly Larry Merchant over here. But these are strange times. I remember a few years back there were rumors that Tyson would be fighting Jake's brother Logan. My mind was thinking that Mike Tyson was going to have an exhibition bout against Paul Hogan, the actor famously known for playing Crocodile Dundee, where strangely enough, Tyson actually appeared in a Crocodile Dundee movie alongside Hogan. I honestly thought Tyson and Hogan might have been doing some kind of charity event, like when Holyfield got dropped by former presidential candidate Mighty Mitt Romney. Now I'm using that same stupid joke here again, and obviously by the time I made a video regarding those rumors between Tyson and Logan, I had realized my mistake. Tyson did have an exhibition match several years back against a fellow boxing legend, Roy Jones Jr., Tyson came out bobbing and weaving and trying to show that vintage Tyson style that enabled him to become the youngest boxer in history to capture a portion of the heavyweight championship. He was targeting the body and giving us hints of what was once there. Same for Roy. He still showed flashes of that sneaky style that relied on tremendous reflexes and hand speed. And with Mike, I swear he seemed more mentally focused than he had been throughout most of his second career, trying to do a lot of those little things he did so well in the 80s, but started neglecting in the 90s. Now obviously they were both breathing heavy, and they were obviously far removed from what defined their greatness. But at their ages, I was impressed by what I saw, but that in itself was nearly four years ago now. Meanwhile, Jake Paul had his second professional fight on that Tyson Jones undercard, and in total, Jake Paul has had 10 fights, winning 9 and losing once. Most of his fights have been against non-professionals or MMA fighters, but he has fought a few real boxers, and to his credit, he has shown a little boxing ability in the context of what he is doing. The one decent boxer he faced was Tommy Fury, and he lost that one. But the fact remains, Tyson is going to be 58 years old, and Jake Paul is in the prime of his life. So on one hand, you have a former all-time great who is literally 35 years removed from his best days. And on the other hand, you have a young man in his physical prime who has boxing experience despite never competing at an elite level. It is a circus sideshow attraction, but one that involves Iron Mike Tyson. His entire second career played out like a bit of a circus sideshow, with biting Evander's ear, and trying to break both his arm, and biting Lennox Lewis at the presser, and wanting to eat children. My back is broken. Spinal. What Tyson lacked in skill during his second career, he made up for with his antics and unpredictable behavior. 
Now, as of this moment, it is still unclear to me whether this will just be an exhibition, like when Tyson and Jones did their thing, or whether this might actually be sanctioned as a professional bout. Either way, I'm not entirely convinced that there won't be some unspoken arrangement where neither guy looks to seriously hurt each other. At the same time, who knows if in the heat of the moment things might get out of hand where a real fight breaks out. Or maybe in either scenario, it won't matter, and both will be treating this as a real fight. The difference between an exhibition and a sanctioned bout is significant in terms of whether rounds are two or three minutes long, and whether they use 16-ounce gloves versus 10-ounce gloves. Things like that could make a difference. Let's assume for a moment that this will be a real fight, with both guys fully intending to win. I think everyone wants to see Iron Mike score a devastating early knockout, with one of those cruel and menacing combos that leaves his opponent's head snapping, like Emmanuel mentioned. After all, Paul plays up the role of a heel quite well, and despite the fact Iron Mike was once a bit of a villainous character himself after prison, he is clearly the babyface legend in this scenario, an old Harry Callahan coming out of a placid retirement, so he can bring punks to justice one last time. That's what we have here. That's the mood I'm reading in the general overall perception of this event. But what we do not want to see is something like what happened when 58-year-old Evander Holyfield got stopped in a round against Belfort. That was almost three years ago now. And seeing an all-time legend get beaten around like that at his age, not enjoyable. Now Tyson appears to be a little sturdier and more fluid than Holyfield was at the same age. But damn, he's 58 years old. Who the hell knows how his body will react if a real fight breaks out. Now Tyson did look like he still had some fight in him back with the Jones exhibition, where I'm convinced the two legends were just trying to put on a show, exhibiting some flashes of what once made each of them great, without trying to embarrass one another. But if a real fight does break out, anything can happen. I'd still fully expect Tyson to be able to land something big early, if he has any real intention of taking Paul out. And I'll go further and say that's what I'd be hoping for. An early devastating knockout for Iron Mike, with the whole world watching on Netflix, where Mike can finally walk away for good with a positive lasting image for the fans, both in terms of nostalgia for those who lived through his prime fighting years, and also for the experience for younger fans who may have never gotten the chance to witness Prime Tyson in action. I'd like to believe that Tyson will blast Paul out with a vintage right hook to the body followed by a right uppercut to the face. But will that actually happen? I have no idea whatsoever. What the hell do I know? I ain't exactly Quasimodo over here. So Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. What do you think? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner. Give him your wallet. What for? He's got a knife. <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. No, 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 man. That's where you're wrong. This is not just an exhibition fight that doesn't mean anything. You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? HBO needs to fire you. You don't know shit about boxing. You ain't shit. You're, you're not shit. I wish I was 50 years younger you and I'd man. kick your ass. You won't do shit. <laughs> what was the problem? I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You broke back, back is broken. What a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. What's meditating? Uh, meditating is a, a special place I go in my mind where there's no distraction and I receive a great source of power. You got me curious. You got me curious, Rob. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this.